One of the most powerful things I've learned this year is how much stress can impact the communicative abilities in someone with aphasia and how it plays a role in their overall recovery. The most common and perhaps the most obvious example is when a client is struggling trying to find that word that seems to be on the tip of their tongue. When the word doesn't come to them, their frustration becomes apparent. As you begin to see the tension on their face, you can hear it in their voice, and you see them pushing harder and harder, sometimes even holding their breath, hoping that this increased effort will result in them finding that darn word. However, the opposite seems to happen. As they try harder and harder, that word just seems to be further and further away. When I start to see this happen, I encourage my client to stop, relax, and breathe. I encourage them to let their air flow carry out their words. And it, it sounds so simple, but it's amazing what happens. More often than not, as soon as they let it go, they take a breath and the tension drains from their face. You can literally see it happen. And they look as though they've had 100 pounds lifted off their shoulder. And then there it is. That word that they wanted, it just comes out of their mouth in this somewhat effortless, easy manner. So it's pretty miraculous. And again, it seems so simple, but it's really powerful. I actually had a colleague of mine several years ago make an analogy that has stuck with me um, comparing this word finding situation to catching a, a dandelion weed floating through the air. So he compared the word to the dandelion. And as we try harder and harder to catch it with our hand, that dandelion weed escapes from us and it floats further away. However, once we relax and place the palm of our hand in the air, just allowing that dandelion to come to land in the palm of our hand, we have it, just like the words we were pushing for, trying so hard to find. So once we let it go, it comes to us. Of course, I know it's not always that simple in aphasia, but this is just something that has always stuck with me and, and I think is an interesting analogy. I've also seen this aphasia stress play a huge role in our clients with apraxia. I can't even begin to imagine how incredibly frustrating it is to have this disconnect between your brain and your articulators. You know what you want to say, but you can't get your mouth to do what you want it to do. So naturally, these clients have a lot of stress and tension, which significantly impacts the tone of their voice, their jaw placement, their ability to control their tongue, and so on. I've found it more challenging to reduce the aphasia stress and the apraxia stress in individuals like this. But when they take a breath and you see them release that tension in their face, you see the tension release in their neck and their articulators, you can actually hear a change in their voice, a relaxation in their voice, and they sound like a completely different person. And, and the transformation can be quite miraculous. I think the challenge in all of this is how do we get our clients, our clients who want to be who they were before their strokes or before their brain injury, our clients who are highly motivated to get better but are also extremely frustrated that the progress is so slow despite all their efforts, how do we get them to truly relax? I mean, taking a breath is sort of the obvious answer. However, you as the clinician should be able to see when your client truly takes a relaxation breath versus when they're sort of just faking you out and the tension is still written all over their face. So you have to make sure that their breath is a meaningful one. Having your client be mindful is another huge benefit and I have to admit that I haven't quite been able to put my finger on exactly what this means yet, but as I've began to encourage my clients to use this technique, my personal interpretation is being mindful is sort of being in the moment, truly thinking about what you're doing and why you're doing it, and having complete awareness of your mind, body, and soul. So taking the time to think about what you're feeling, what you're thinking, almost like being in a complete metacognitive, metalinguistic, meta-emotional state. And finally, although this may seem counterintuitive, encouraging your client to let go of whatever it is they're trying to say or do. As I mentioned previously, sometimes it's that exact thing that helps them say or do what they want. So these are just a few of the things that I've learned this year about aphasia and aphasia recovery. And we know that our clients and our aphasia toolbox and TCC community will help us to continue to learn about aphasia recovery.